we're going to talk about today, today about uh, Swift UI. And uh, actually, our main topic is: is it really ready for production? That's that's uh, that's big. There's loads of debate in the, the uh, iOS dev community. Um, and so we, we're going to address that uh, in, in this uh, presentation and the Q&A, uh, which will follow. Um, so but first, let's introduce ourselves. So we've got the two of us who are going to pre present this uh, session. Uh, I'm Olivier. Uh, probably notice my accent. I'm French. So sorry about that. Uh, don't worry. Ask me again and ask you, uh, if I don't understand what you um, um, what you ask me. Any questions about, you know, Anything we'll see about in QA session. Uh, um, I'm a senior manager, mobile engineering um, a manager at a New Day. I joined New Day quite recently, uh, eight months ago. So, um, uh, but before working at New Day, I was the head of mobile at Quico for four or five years in the UK. I've got about 20 years of experience in managing mobile teams. So, uh, yeah, starting with J2Me, Symbian, stuff like this. Um, then the loads of different things, and uh, and now I'm um, uh, leading the mobile team on New Day. So that's uh, that's about me. Uh, and we are Francisco. Francisco. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Francisco Pereira. Sorry for my Portuguese accent. Um, I now live in London. I work for New Day uh, for over two years. I did a bit of iOS and Android at the beginning. Now mostly all iOS. Uh, I started leading uh, a team in Jan 2020. That's when we started introducing SwiftUI in New Day. Uh, before New Day, I worked for Thomson Reuters for over five years, uh, where I was part of product advance and innovation. Thank you. Uh, this background is not from Portugal, probably from Bahamas. <laughs> Thank you, Francisco. It's something I forgot to tell and we should have uh, as uh, we are recording this session and we will share it later on um, with uh, the uh, participants. I uh, don't know exactly when, but uh, you will get uh, an email about this later on. Another thing, if you've got any questions, there is a Q&A session at the end. Please keep your question for the end if you can. Uh, we also have a chat box. Uh, but yeah, uh, let, let's let's see how it goes. This presentation is just about, you know, is a kind of a support for the QA sessions later on. So, uh, uh, and um, um, yeah, this is it. So let's talk about New Day first. New Day, uh, New Day is a um, uh, provides credit financial services in the UK. Uh, so we have more than five million something um, customers in the UK, about twelve hundred employees. Uh, two main offices uh, in the UK, London and, and Leeds. You probably heard about us uh, um, uh, because we provide services for big companies and uh, we got our uh, own products as well. We're going to talk about a little bit just to, as an introduction. So main topic today is Swift UI. So um, we're not going to explain uh, what Swift UI is in this chat or combine. I mean, they're, they're, that's not the topic of this chat. We want to share with you um, um, uh, our journey, our experience, uh, why we adopted Swift UI. But um, we, we, we say Swift UI because it's the most visible part of the of two frameworks, basically Swift UI and Combine, as we can, cannot mention uh, Swift UI without mentioning Combine. Uh, but they, they work very well together. So the, the, this chat is not really about to explain what Swift UI is, how you code with Swift UI, but uh, why we uh, adopted it. Um, the loads and pros and cons. I mean, this is a very, it's, it's not an, it's a non-exhaustive list of pros and cons. It's also very subjective. Uh, so, uh, uh, we think, yeah, it has a loss of advantages, it's interactive, it's fast, it's easy to code and use, it's compatible with UIKit, uh, but it has some caveats, yeah, some disadvantages. Uh, yeah, it's still fresh um, uh, for launching iOS 13. Uh, it's sometimes difficult to test. Uh, there are other things. I mean, we're going to talk about that later. Uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, we're not going to talk about in details unless you want to. It's the problem in Q and A. Uh, but our main main thing is uh, uh, our main topic is to 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 share with you why we think that Swift UI is ready for production. So when did we? How did we start in? And 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 uh, 
why did we make this decision? Uh, so which challenges uh, did we face? So how do we plan to use it in the future? So uh, as I said at the beginning, there are loads of debates within the iOS dev community uh, about this. Is which we are really ready for production? So this is the questions we want to address today. So in this talk, we want to share with you our experience, our journey, the reasons why we made the decision uh, by adopting SwiftUI a new day. Um, uh, but we also want to learn from you guys uh, what you think of it. And uh, it's really uh, a session about sharing knowledge. Um, so these slides just a support for that. Uh, before we talk about Swift UI. Swift UI. Uh, I mentioned that New Day was um, a financial uh, um, credits uh, um, provider. Uh, we have at New Day 18 apps, 18 mobile apps, um, uh, five what we call own brands, and uh, 13 core brands. So the most famous, the most popular um, um, New Day app is Aqua. Aqua credit card, basically the Aqua credit card. Is, uh, is an app that with a credit card that helps you to raise your credit score. Um, all, these, all these apps, mobile apps, basically they are companion apps or uh, credit cards, physical credit cards for all of them, except one, which is called BIP. And this is an innovating uh, project. We haven't launched it yet. We announced it uh, last November and we're going to launch a closed beta uh, in March. So uh, the, uh, um, among the core cool brands, the most popular one is obviously Amazon. So Amazon, Platinum, MasterCard, this is, basically this is us. Um, so we have uh, other partners. You can see some of them, uh, retailers, are not doing so well at the moment. You can see Debenhams, well, Lower Day Tree. Uh, but we're going to have new partners this year. Uh, so, uh, um, and so we provide services, uh, credit services for these guys. Um, Okay, so that's own brands, co-brands. Co Some example, I don't know if uh, any of you uh, has a one of our uh, credit card uh, or, or apps. Uh, these are very simple to, you know, simple screenshots of two apps, Aqua Card, uh, Amazon MasterCard. You can see on the left-hand side, uh, the Aqua Card, uh, screenshots of the, um, uh, uh, of the homepage in the middle and uh, uh, the Amazon MasterCard homepage uh, as well in the middle. Very similar. They're very, very, very similar. You can uh, just at a glance uh, uh, understand that they are well labeled apps. Yeah, they are well labeled apps. Um, the, other car, the other app that I wanted to mention, and uh, I'm going to ask Francisco about this, is this BIP. BIP is a new app that we're going to launch uh, in uh, closed beta end of Q1. It's a cardless credit uh, app. The idea is um, that uh, imagine that you want to buy a new, uh, you know, a fancy TV uh, at, on a curious website. You're on the website, you don't have the money, you, you want to borrow some money to get some credits very quickly, you don't want to wait. Uh, you use BIP and you apply, uh, register, uh, and you fill a form or several forms just with the app. It's a mobile app only service. In 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you, you get a credit card number, including a CVV that you can use on the website. Uh, this app uh, is, um, is a brand new, it's a very innovative. We're going to launch it so end of Q1. Uh, it's uh, the UI is be entirely coded in Swift UI. So uh, Francisco, can you tell us uh, a bit about this? Francisco has been uh, uh, the lead on, on Swift UI and BIP since the beginning, and uh, that started from, uh, some, some while ago. Yes, maybe I can tell a bit of the story how it started. Um, it started in 2019 um, when Apple announced and there was all this excitement about it, replacing UI kit. Um, and at the time, in 2019, uh, we, when I was interviewing uh, iOS developers, they were quite interested about uh, Swift UI. And that actually, um, we were asking actually that, uh, asking that question: What do you think about Swift UI? Is it ready for production? And this topic started to become more and more interesting to know to us to know about it. And when I moved to BIP in 2020 in Jan, um, I found it's maybe a great opportunity to to use Swift UI 
first because we have too many screens to do and I uh, and the the um, it was quite tight the, the the time to do all the screens and I thought that you know let's try Swift UI and see how good it is and straight away I noticed how fast the development is in Swift UI and I thought that this to make it possible to, to, to launch this product, I think we really need to go to do in Swift UI because doing 40 screens in, in UI kit that takes ages. And I'm more confident that we can do it in Swift UI, which we could actually. In uh, six months, we have those 40 screens in Swift UI. Uh, so uh, after doing the first POC, and the uh, CTO was quite happy with it uh, because it was also, it's also innovation is part of, of New Day's DNA. So he was quite keen that, okay, yes, let's do this. It's, uh, it's also good to you know, attract uh, a new talent, uh, ambitious and you know, the best that, that we have in London. And we can also try to sell that, you know, we're going to use this uh, cutting edge technology and we're going to try to make this up the best up in the financial market. Uh, yeah, let's, let's do that. Then the challenge was to convince the, the stakeholders because we had to stop use, uh, supporting iOS 11 and 12, uh, which, we could con which we convinced them because this is a techno technology uh, decision to use SwiftUI. And we proved that the adoption of SwiftUI more specific, iOS 13, uh, in, when we're going to launch, it's going to be very, very huge. Uh, it's going to be like 95%. And at the time we launched iOS and uh, BIP, it's going to, we're going to have uh, iOS 14 as well. So those are the, the reasons why we started uh, using SwiftUI. Okay, thank, thank you, Francisco. There is a, uh, to, to, to show you a little bit what, you know, kind of architecture, very high level view of the mobile app architecture that we have in New Day. Uh, it's not exactly, well, it's not exactly the, 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 the uh, uh, it's very simplified basically. So, and, and the, uh, the most important, you know, technology, technology that we use in our tech stack. So, uh, as I said before, it's a, we, we, we have, a way, this is a wearable app, a bit, it's a bit different, but all the, all the other ones are wearable apps, a single code base platform. Um, so all the features are hidden behind uh, feature flags. Uh, so we can push to production even if we don't enable the feature. Um, it's still partly an hybrid app. Uh, when I was showing um, um, a few slides before, uh, the AquaCard and the Amazon a card home screen that we call the account summary. Actually, they're web views. They're complex web views, but they're web views, and it's something we want, we want to get rid of. But and th these in green on the on this slide, you can see three boxes in green. So BIP written in Swift UI, credit score. That's a new feature that we launched in uh, December for our Aqua app. Uh, the UI has been entirely uh, written in Swift UI combined. And the new uh, consumer screen, which is a work in progress, we haven't launched it yet, uh, is also a feature that we um, that we uh, use. Uh, we, we code it in Swift UI combined. So uh, this is that gives you mm, uh, you know a very high level view of what how we we adopted it in our uh, architecture and how it has uh, which impact it has on uh, our technical uh, on our tech stack. Uh, just for the record, yeah, uh, for all uh, our apps are entirely written in Swift. Um, we use MVVR, uh, MVVM as well, coordinator, flow controller, basically routing technology uh, and for, for, for that. And we're going to talk about this uh, later on. Actually. So the, uh, as Francisco mentioned, there, there were several challenges uh, that we faced uh, where, when we made the decision, it was before I joined the company, but a former CTO and I want to go where there. And, uh, and yeah, these challenges were, well, mostly there are three of them. The, the first one was the adoption rate of iOS 13. Uh, in January 2020, 80% uh, of iOS users uh, use uh, iOS 13. Uh, so uh, we have to convince, convince the stakeholders 
that uh, it was safe because 80 percent is not 100 it's not 95 it's i mean it could still a lot of people who were not using ios uh, devices running on os 13 so the very first challenge was to convince them the second challenge was the learning curve and because it was so fresh uh, they were uh, a year ago well lack of documentation uh, maybe uh, well, uh, and a deaf community uh, you know, sharing the experience was very, very fresh. Um, and uh, it was very difficult to find an example of complex uh, task uh, anywhere. Is it to start with the basics, but difficult to, to understand how can more complex task could be done in SwiftUI? And, uh, and the last challenge is SwiftUI was, and probably still is, uh, uh, very perfectible. Um, uh, the, uh, it was the, we had a very limited collection of components, uh, but we had UI kit compatibility, but very limited collection of components. It's getting better with Swift, Swift UI 2, um, or iOS 14. Um, it's not perfect, but it's still it's better. Um, one of the major flaws, well, it's a personal opinion, but we can talk about this in, in the Q&A, as routing, routing, Starkly coupled with the views, uh, quite like the coordinate pattern. Um, uh, we haven't found something equivalent on Switch UI. Is it, is it a Switch UI? Is it possible or not? Yeah, let's talk about this in QA. And testing as well it was a bit, a bit difficult. So these are the challenges that we faced. Uh, um, the others, but the, these ones were the main ones. So how did we address that and how did it, did it work? Well, the first one, it's very easy. I mean, Francisco already mentioned it, is the adoption rate. Uh, uh, and some of you, uh, well, I guess loads of you already know that iOS adoption rate is really very high. I mean, right, if it's, it's a cliff edge usually for many reasons, uh, uh, Apple being Apple, uh, uh, it's much more fragmented on, on, on Android, as you may know, uh, but, uh, on iOS, uh, it can be very um, quick. Um, so in general, a year ago, 80% of iOS users use iOS 13. This is the graph you can see uh, on, on the right hand side, that is mixed panel uh, uh, graph um, in, January, in January 2020. Uh, checked last, last week, uh, 92, more than 92% of our iOS users um, uh, have uh, iOS 14 devices, which is big, it's huge, and about 4% iOS 13. The rest, it's under. We support iOS 11, um, 12, 13, 14. Uh, we're probably going to drop iOS 11 very soon, actually, because we're less than 0.1% of our iOS, of our, our iOS users uh, running on iOS 11. Uh, we're not going to drop iOS 12 yet, but yeah, that that this this challenge uh, actually was is is not a blocker. Uh, that's not a blocker for us at all. The adoption was so 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 good that it was not a problem at all. And uh, when you can see on iOS 14, even it's going to help us in the future. Um, the second thing, the second reason that why we we adopted Swift UI. Uh, was the new application. So we'll already talk about BIP. Um, BIP, uh, well, we, we assume that whether it's commercial, uh, the commercial team, the marketing team, they assume that the um, target for this new app would be a, of a young generation. So basically having probably assuming that they would have more recent phones. So that's one thing. So we expecting, we were, they were, we were assuming that uh, the uh, iOS 13 blocker was not a blocker at all, actually. Uh, another thing uh, which has an impact, uh, and um, we were supposed to launch BIP uh, September last year. Uh, so we didn't. We didn't because of the pandemic. It's, it's very simple. It's not a technical reasons because um, the, the, the board uh, thought that maybe that was not the right time to launch a new app, a new service during the pandemic. Uh, so this is one reason that there, there were loads of uncertainty. And, uh, and, and so this is why we have delayed uh, the launch uh, of this uh, new app. So that's uh, the, the second reason, it's a new application. 
The third reason, the third reason is new feature. So I was mentioning this new feature is called Aqua Coach. Aqua Coach is a credit score feature uh, that you can find only at the moment in the Aqua uh, in the Aqua Card app. So. Uh, uh, because that's a we 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 hide all our features behind feature flags, uh, so this feature is enabled on the on, on Aqua. Um, so we we implemented this feature with with UIM Combine, uh, which allow us to go very quickly. Um, with nice design. Uh, it's only visible, of course, for users um, running on iOS 13 uh, or above, which is actually not a problem. Uh, we didn't have any problem convincing stakeholders that, you know, maybe less than 5% of the Aqua users will not see that, maybe less than three actually. So uh, that was not a problem. So that was one of the reasons we acted, uh, adopted it. Um, the third reason, a fourth reason, sorry, is uh, it's basically to replace our uh, web views. Uh, and it's a kind of a luxury, I'm quite lucky in a way, uh, because our um, home screen that we call the uh, a account summary, uh, just embed a web view, a complex web view, but still web view. So we have a solution for iOS 12. Uh, we, we, we have to, it's not like a new feature that we can, you know, decide not to show. I mean, the home screen there for everybody, we have to have a home screen. So, but uh, lucky us, we have a web view for uh, running on iOS 11, iOS 12. And uh, now we're going to have um, pretty soon an entirely new account summary screen uh, on, on uh, iOS 13 and iOS 14, thanks to uh, Swift UI. So that's the fourth, the fourth reason. Uh, and the last reason, very simple. Uh, and Francisco already mentioned before, uh, a new day is a, uh, adopt, uh, adopted, uh, adopted a tech-driven um, tech strategy. We want to use the latest and, and best technologies to code, for example, in this case, UI faster and better um, to attract new talents. That's the main thing that we want to, add, to use the best technologies. And we start targeting iOS 14 now um, because uh, it's a most huge majority of iOS users now use iOS 14. And uh, for those of you who already, you know, had a look at uh, or some experience on Swift UI, uh, you probably saw the loads of, uh, of things that Apple brought in uh, in iOS 14. And so this is the kind of thing that we want to um, to uh, to do now from now on. So yeah, that's that's the five reason why we adopted Swift UI. So there's these five reasons. If I can summarize them, they are there. Adoption rate, not a blocker. We launch a new app. We launch a new feature in the existing app, and we replaced our uh, web views by native code. Uh, and the last one is with the we think that Swift UI and Combine will play a very important role in the future of the iOS development uh, platform. So. This that is the our, our main um, uh, that was the the, the summary of, of, of decisions. But now um, let us talk. So uh, you have on the on the um, uh, uh, I think you have on Zoom. Uh, the, uh, you can raise your hands, and I'd like to know how many of you have already pushed Swift UI code to production. How many of you have? already pushed your on production. Uh, I guess on, on the chat, you may have a possibility of, oh, no, that's not me, oh, sorry. Uh, Olivia, you have some problems. Um, no. That's it, that's it, okay, I'm back. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so uh, Enric. Okay, let's let me push back to this one. Yeah. So, how many of you? I think uh, there, there uh, I saw one person just saying that uh, that he uh, pushed something on production. Is that Enric? Is that you? 
Okay, so if you want to ask uh, questions on the chats, yeah, feel free. Can't see anything, yeah. Okay, Q&A. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. I've got, okay, so I've got a question from uh, Francesco Tullo, okay. Um, how, how do you calculate your own credit score? You use the one from Experience Halifax. Actually, we partner with TransUnion. This, this is, this is uh, okay. Um, you can use the Q&A session, you can use the Q&A uh, or uh, the, this, okay, yeah, that's it. There are some people are writing some uh, comments in the chat. Okay. Eric says, not production, but we are writing, rewriting our core app in Swift UI. Uh, as her ask what percentage of native Swift code did you have to refactor to Swift UI? So uh, do you like, I can't see the, um, I can't see the, um, okay, that is all right. I, I can answer, um, yeah. so what percentage, percentage of native Swift code did you have to refactor to Swift UI? Um, we all, we use 100% Swift. We don't have a single code in Objective-C. So we didn't have that problem. We did have to use UI kit uh, for some specific things uh, for the UI. Uh, apart from it, everything was in Swift UI. We've been not touching UI kit much uh, the last few months, very rarely. It's all new features all in Swift UI. Yeah, like I guess some send a message. Do you combine Swift UI storyboards or is it pure Swift UI? Uh, yeah, so actually uh, we use storyboards in the link that's in the old part of the app um, uh, and we use pure Swift UI on the new ones. Any other questions? Um, a comment from Andras Paul. Our app is going to launch soon. Congratulations. It's basically 98% Swift UI, but I can't really tell you anything about it yet. Mm, very excited about it. Uh, I hope everything goes well and um, you successfully launch your product and maybe move to 100% maybe in the future. So, so, uh, so uh, I mean, some, some, some of you said, so how many of you used Swift UI in production? I, I think that it doesn't seem that the many of you. How many, how many of you um, think about pushing uh, an app to production? So we haven't done it yet, but so, I mean, we already won. Uh, how many of you, does anybody? Enric, is that you? Okay. Um, and how many of you uh, doesn't want to use Swift UI at all? or use another framework and doesn't want to change it, or we just, we like to wait and see. Okay, I can see the chat. Okay, few production, okay. Quite a few, few comments in there. Um, Okay, Dean's, maybe I should uh, add it at the top. Okay. Um, let me write, okay. So Dean, you say that you've pushed a few apps in production to a witch and something, okay. Yeah, they, they lose all limitations. For, let me, uh, 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 there, there are quite a few limitations. Uh, uh, um, and, and this is something that, uh, that maybe we could, uh, uh, we could talk about. Um, for me, the main flow of Swift UI is the uh, it's uh, actually the uh, the routing. Uh, is it something that you um, you uh, 
you also think that's do you think the same uh, it's for me it's not really the lack of components especially well especially now with ios 14 but it's mostly the lack of the 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 routing which is tightly coupled with the view Uh, and for me, that's the main issue. But I don't know. Would you what would you think about that? I'm going to double check. Okay. Okay. I mentioned you in Swiss UI also support all the version iOS version. I mean uh, that's where the uh, is available. It's quite easy to do. Uh, Steve Steve Clark, you said. Uh, that's no problem. It's 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 uh, possible. Vadislav, you say okay, two percent of our user use on iOS twelve. Yeah, exactly the same thing uh, uh, with us. Um, yeah, I think uh, so. Sam, uh, you said I think it's fine for applications with simple UI and functionality, but for usable views and collections, not quite there yet. It is true, but there has been a quite a lot of improvement with iOS 14 uh, because now you can implement, okay, it's not exactly as, uh, I mean, with uh, the big read and the edge grid, it's probably not at the same level of UI collection views, exceptionally, <laughs> especially on iOS 14, actually, because Apple provided um, um, a lot more, you know, uh, features for uh, UI collection views. Um, so, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't stick. Well, I mean, to uh, only very simple UI, uh, but yeah, very very complex UI. It's true that's probably not at the level of a UI kit yet, uh, but uh, I'm pretty sure that it will be. Uh, I don't know what you think, uh, Francisco. Oh, you're on mute. Oh, sorry. I was typing. Uh, I was. Uh, uh... Uh, answering Oliver's question about managing complex data. What was the question, sir? Yeah, yeah, sorry. So the, the, the question was about collection views. Uh, well, uh, I, I was saying that some were saying that uh, it, it's okay to use SwiftUI for simple UI, which I think is fully agree with, especially iOS 13. Uh, but now with the the, uh, the improvement that we, 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 we got in iOS 14, I think that we can, uh, is getting better and better. Yeah, the problem with um, Swift version one is that it doesn't have the lazy um, collections. Uh, so on iOS 14, it managed that for us. We don't have that on iOS 13. So managing a complex data, um, you know, showing on a table can be a problem, memory problem if you put thousands of rows there because there's no concept of reusable cells like on, on UI kit for on iOS 13, Swift UI 1. But uh, Apple addressed that on Swift UI 2. Yeah. The, the question for Martin the question for Martin would QA have to test two flows for hybrid and Swift UI? Yes. Uh, so but the, the way we, the, the, the way we work a new day uh, testing the app, well if I can summarize it basically uh, when we push a, uh, a PR, when we push a build to QA, they test it manually and then they write a test script, which they add to their uh, a regression pack. So, uh, and then that's it. So they don't need to write another test after what they, so that's, it's not really a big problem, but yes, so the, 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 uh, the, uh, the automation um, uh, test, uh, uh, test uh, both uh, hybrid and uh, the hybrid part and, and Swift UI part. Yeah, that's correct. Um, uh, I can see Steve said we, with our code base, we still need to support all the iOS versions for now. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I be, to be honest with you, I haven't uh, touched a single line of Objective C in the last four and a half years, I think. So uh, uh, I can barely uh, you know, remember how it looks like. Objective C, not bad language actually. Uh, but yeah, uh, when, uh, when um, uh, I, I was saying that I was working in, in various companies before joining New Day, um, a few years ago, I, I worked seven years in mobile agencies. And what I tend to, te to tell my customers what, you know, it, would, it, it was good to rewrite, you know, apps, you know, every two or three years, just to keep up with the technology. 
were something they were not really happy with all the time. But uh, uh, but actually, uh, yeah, it's not completely um, uh, wrong to rewrite from app to app. What you need to do even better is to improve your code base. You know, uh, as as it goes on. I mean, it's always try to improve your code base. And this is what we're trying to do with Swift UI. This is what we also uh, um, uh, have been doing even, even uh, well, very recently. Um, well, Swift, uh, as an example, um, uh, Swift UI 1, so iOS 13, doesn't support uh, keyboard avoidance, which is a nightmare to implement. Uh, and there is no proper way of doing it. Um, but uh, iOS 14 does. And now, so we implemented keyboard avoidance on year 13 uh, and had really uh, gave, gave us uh, headaches. It's doable, but it's painful. Um, and now with uh, Swift UI 2, iOS 14, well, basically you give it for free. You get, you, you get it for free. So, uh, uh, and we have um, 90, more than 92% of our user running iOS 14. So. So what we can tell to the product owners is, uh, okay, right, does it really matter if uh, the UX is, a little, is not as good on iOS 14 than iOS 13? It's not only a technical decision, it's also a product decision, uh, but this is something that um, they might, um, um, you know, they might take this decision basically, but we as technical persons, we need to provide them the tools and the data so that they can take this decision. So is it good or not? I don't know, but yeah, they will lose and lose of things uh, in, in iOS 14. Um, another comment. Um, Just want to share that uh, we did use UI kits uh, when the implementing Swift UI. And, um, and the reason was that we, there are two reasons. One, when we had struggles with uh, there was no components. And the second reason was that um, we had already some UI components that we wanted to reuse. So we could have this representable, this wrapper on top, and we could very easily reuse them using uh, uh, into Swift UI. And I'll also use a previews together, which was a, a bonus. Yeah, and, and there is something that I, I can see in the Q&A uh, box as well. A couple of questions uh, regarding Swift UI, the future or the present. Uh, I think fully agree with the Francisco. I think that's a future of, uh, of, of um, uh, um, in the past, I used quite a lot Rx, Rx Swift. So I love reactive programming. I think that's, I think that's a very, I mean, it's not the only way of programming, but the reactive programming is great, especially on the mobile, app, on mobile apps and not only. Uh, use a lot Rx which tend to be a bit complex at some point, and uh, it's difficult to understand what you wrote after you know uh, a few weeks' time. You do not understand what you uh, how you know how you what you wrote basically. Reviewing PRs or code that you wrote several months ago can be a bit complex, uh, but that's a way to go. I mean, reactive programming. I mean, uh, Swift uh, well, Combine, for example, is you know Apple's take on reactive programming, and, and it's probably uh, it's not as as, as, as uh, good in terms of functionality features than Rx, uh, but it will be. Uh, and um, uh, on the other hand, 100, you got Kotlin Flow. So um, uh, when, uh, I'm not sure this, and this is a personal opinion, I don't think that it would be uh, 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 really a good idea to adopt Rx today uh, because we have uh, Swift UI combined on iOS and Kotlin, uh, Kotlin for um, Jetpack Compose uh, on on Android. So the two, the, the, it's funny because they, they're very similar. Uh, both Apple and Google adopted uh, are adopting declarative UI programming uh, with Jetpack Compose on Android, Swift UI on uh, on iOS, and reactive programming. Kotlin flow on Android uh, combined on iOS, very, very similar in a way. Uh, so yeah, they, 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 we all go in the same direction. In a way, uh, this is, I mean, for years, Apple pushed MVC, which is not necessarily a bad 
uh, uh, architecture uh, if it's properly uh, done. Um, but they, now with Sweet you and Combine, they push MVM a lot, uh, like Google has done on Android as well. Uh, uh, is that the best architecture? Pro probably not. Uh, probably not the only one. But yeah, it's true that they are pushing us a little bit in this direction. Is it a good thing or bad thing? Uh, I, I don't know. Um, um, let me check if you've got other questions. Um, yeah, I think that's Oliver. Uh, you mentioned composable architecture, and Francisco mentioned it. Yeah, we've watched uh, videos for from Point Three and Redux architecture, which is uh, which is great. Um, one other problem where these uh, uh, architecture they, they rely on big on heavy frameworks, which is same thing with uh, Eric's actually. Um, and the uh, and at New Day, because we we work in the financial sector in a way, we got to be careful when we adopt new frameworks. Uh, so uh, uh, when we have to embed a new SDK in the app, we uh, the our uh, security team has to vet it. So uh, so this they, they, they can be a bit you know um, uh, worried about us adopting big frameworks. That means that doesn't mean that we're going to not to do this, but but this is not embedding big, you know big frameworks is something that you know security would be happy with. So um, yeah. Um, okay. Um, uh, Peter asked about iOS and Android. How how do we sync? Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, yeah. Francisco already replied to, to that. Uh, as long yeah, they, they they both apps looks very similar. They they, they shared exactly the same same feature set. Uh, Apple Pay, for example, on iOS, Google Pay on Android, and uh, yeah, they very, they look extremely similar. Uh, we 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 well, ideally we like to, to the iOS app to be as iOS -y as possible, the Android app to be as Android -y as possible. So uh, and they don't share the same um, um, uh, code base. Uh, but yeah, but we can we keep up we keep up uh, so uh, both on design and 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 uh, I presented um, I show you a very briefly high level uh, view of uh, of um, uh, architecture. So uh, and so we are working on modularizing the app uh, uh, the apps both iOS and Android exactly uh, more or less the same way um, to keep some consistency uh, so which is um, even better. But it doesn't mean that we're going to use the same technology. We want to use the, the best one or the eighth. Um, uh, another one. Any anybody, I mean, want to ask the question about anybody wants to to say uh, anybody uh, about routing? Because th this is something which really, really uh, give me uh, crazy. Uh, that's for me, that's a main flow. And, does any of you have, uh, I don't know, another proposal, something else that uh, you think that uh, would be really nice to have uh, in, in Swift UI? Okay, I can see in the Q&A. Um, so Rob, oh, Rob, <laughs> hey, Rob, <laughs> you can see your question first. Have you noticed any significant benefits, IP side effects to migrating Swift UI other than speed up development, performance, less crashes, and no. Oh, it's an interesting question. Uh, actually, in terms of um, well, in terms of crashings, uh, crashes, not really, except at the beginning. Swift UI preview sometimes tended to crash. It's getting better. So, but that's not, you know, um, that's not something that customers would face anyway. Uh, Swift UI performance uh, is amazing, actually, if it's properly done. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, the Swift UI runtime is, 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 is magic. Uh, there, I think Apple released, I mean, they presented uh, not only, uh, well, uh, uh, WWDC in July uh, last year, uh, there was a session about this. It's, uh, it's absolutely amazing. Um, the uh, SwissUI is a new framework, so there are loads of things that we still need to understand, we, and we, we don't know. So, yeah, uh, 
uh, but yeah, I mean, to, to reply to you uh, on, on about, uh, about this, the benefits, happy side, one is it makes uh, the deaf happy. I don't know, but Francisco, what do you think about that? Uh, about performance, sorry? About it. So, well, about two things. I mean, I'm, I'm just replying to Rob uh, asking about the benefits. It's not really a benefit for the customers, but it's, it's benefits for, for the dev. Uh, I think that uh, we, I know the old part, the legacy part of our app, uh, we, we use storyboards, which is something I'm not really keen on, to be honest. Uh, and from storyboards, me migrating to uh, coding new UI stuff on Swift UI and combine. I mean, it makes, uh, I think, the dev happy. Um, he says, other than speed of development, but I need to talk about speed of development because and one other thing we didn't have in the past was that when we program in SwiftUI, why we can see live the changes. We can see the, the, the a phone next to us with the changes. This, this was very painful before we had to run the app Every time we see the change, that every time we run the app can take a minute or two, and it depends. But that really improved a lot the speed of developing. Uh, about crashes, I think our company is very good in, in crash free. So I mean, we keep being very good, even we are using Swift UI. And I think, yeah, it's get, getting more and more stable over the years. Quite excited about that. Um, the benefits, mm. I could say actually some challenge I had. There were not benefits, it was like lack of documentation was the issue. Uh, but the community helped a lot. Uh, I was seeing a lot of comments from Paul Hansen. Uh, he really helped a lot the community in uh, using Swift UI, including myself. Um, um, what else? I found it a bit immature because it was a bit buggy yet when we started, but we can notice now that things are more stable. And there was not like a single thing, even at the beginning when I started that, you could say, no, we can't do in Swifty Y because we can't do this. But there was always a way to do it. Even sometimes that we had to, uh, under the hood, use UI kit uh, to support the Swift UI uh, views. So, and the, but the most big advantage I forgot to mention to me was reusing components. It's so easy to reuse a component. Uh, uh, imagine we create just a you know massive uh, view and it's very easy to extract. We extract bits of code and then we have a component and then we can reuse it uh, elsewhere if you make it public. Um, that really accelerated a lot our process uh, to deliver a bit. Uh, it was thanks to, we were able to very easily reuse components that we managed to go so fast and be so, so successful. I think that's maybe the number one feature. Yeah, the, the, the um, uh, regarding about safety, well, crashes and so on. So yeah, Swift UI, especially simulator, we rendered very complex views. Uh, uh, yeah, used to crash a bit. Uh, uh, it's getting better, but actually you can, it's very easy to, um, to test very quickly, very small components, assemble them everywhere, reuse them. So that's, I mean, it's fantastic. Uh, so uh, yeah, it will get better. But I remember Xcode in the past, interface builder was the same. So uh, uh, so uh, yeah, and the storyboards. Don't tell me about that. It was the same. So it, it improved all the time. Uh, I think there were two questions from Peter and from Dean about uh, iPad OS features. Uh, some of the ones uh, for business case for additional targets such as applets, widgets, watchOS, and so on. So. Um, yeah, regarding iPadOS, unfortunately, at the moment, our, our apps are on, uh, iPhone only. Uh, but this is something that we want to, to, um, to address uh, because we have quite a few uh, iPad users. So yeah, this is definitely something we'd like to do. Is this switch is going to help us on that? Yes, definitely. Um, the other one was about uh, app clips. I just mentioned app clips because I think it's a really cool feature. Um, and why not? Uh, why not we just uh, or, or, or watch OS? Uh, 
uh, chief watchOS uh, member um, building watchOS app for the when Apple launched the uh, Apple watch uh, switch UI 1.2 which was a real pain uh, uh, they, but it was it was funny um, uh, but in the meantime a lot of uh, companies just drop uh, watchOS apps specific apps uh, which is a pain yeah it, it's a shame in a way. Uh, but yeah, we haven't, we haven't, but it's something that we have on a roadmap somewhere. So yeah, we'd like to, we'd like to do this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I was just thinking that maybe that would be something that we could explore Apple Watch on our innovation days. It's something yeah. that the company does every month as one day for innovation day, which uh, I think it's, maybe I'm going to do it next time. Uh, so Apple uh, Watch app. Yeah, that would be that would be awesome. Uh, yeah. I don't think it would be too complicated, to be honest. But that, that would be awesome. There is a the comment from uh, Oliver uh, about the code, using coordinated pattern in UI kit and so on. I guess we can do that. And some some companies used uh, uh, UI uh, host, uh, hosting controllers with the coordinated pattern, uh, having Swift UI views embedded into this and so on. So it, it can work. Yeah, it can work. Uh, but yeah, it it can be yeah. What we have, I fully agree uh, with you, Oliver. What you said, I fully agree. It's it can be complicated, uh, and 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 uh, I'll be honest. I was hoping that uh, Apple would uh, with iOS fourteen would provide something better. Uh, they haven't. The and and honestly, I don't know if it's intrinsic intrinsic. To uh, a Swift UI, Swift UI can 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 uh, can, can uh, they do better? I, honestly, I don't know. Uh, and uh, if you have ideas, just you know, let us know. Uh, even better, join us. Uh, so uh, so uh, we, we are yeah very open to to share. Well, the idea today was to is to share our knowledge and 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 learning from you guys. It's so you can change and and so on. So yeah. So you got. You know, uh, all the questions. Um, let me check in the chats. Um, okay. What What do you think as about the future of Swift UI? I, uh, a few years ago, saying I was working on RX Swift, and I remember one of um, the dev who no experience in reactive programming, just join us and uh, found this absolutely amazing, uh, a bit complex, but amazing. And I told him, I bet you in two years time um, that Swift, uh, that Apple is going to do something very equivalent. And uh, I, I won it, unfortunately, because of lockdown, I haven't seen this guy yet <laughs> again, because he owed me a, a bottle of um, uh, a bottle of champagne, but uh, yeah, that's for the, the record. But uh, unfortunately, yeah. We'll see that later on, but uh, yeah, I, I, and I think that's the future. It's definitely the future. So, um, any other questions, guys? Any uh, other comment you want to to any uh, other thing that haven't? Uh, I'm trying to to look at the. Um, I'm trying to look at all the questions. If we haven't forgotten anyone, uh, anyone? Yeah. Okay. Um, answer to Peter. Um, I like very much doing pair programming, and my team started to adopt reviewing PRs in together. In the um, we we just decided, okay, if someone has a PR, let's have a call us three together and review it. And actually, we managed to learn a lot from it and uh, about Swift UI, but also about, you know, simplifying the code, um, best practices as well. You know, this really helped a lot to for everybody to improve. Uh, at the moment, we are, you know, working from home. Uh, so having these discussions of, you know, reviewing a, a PR uh, live with someone 
uh, or a group like we are doing now, it has been a great experience. Uh, we did in the past, uh, we had an iOS launch meeting. We, we were uh, watching videos from point three about composable architecture, but also we watched a few about the, from the, the previous WWDC, which was quite interesting. And we have our um, iOS guilds as well, where we talk about unit tests, et cetera, and best practices, etc. There, there is um there is um uh, so Peter's uh, yeah ask a question about the you know do you have some tech groups for discussions and so on yeah so that's I'm just going, going to bounce yeah. back to that as well so they are so that's yeah Francisco you talk about you know internally how we internally yes. that, yeah uh, but externally um, the I think we we need to get better maybe our sharing like we do today uh, you know our experience and maybe uh, uh, posting something on the blog yeah, there's something there's, there's a guy called Rob. <laughs> it might be very interesting in that. Uh, so, uh, um, uh, yeah, that's we. It's the more and more swift uh, UI blogs with swift UI and combined blogs at the moment. It's it's. Uh, I mean, there's so many of them, and it's because it's still a recent uh, um, uh, technology that there are lots of very different you know experience, which is good uh, proposals. Uh, some are rubbish, but more than they contribute, all of them, they contribute to, you know, uh, how we share the knowledge. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and I think you would, they would like, uh, as a kind of a funnel, um, I'm, I'm, call, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the example of coordinator, for example, I mean, Kandlu, I mean, it was in 2015, I think released on 2014, I can't remember, uh, releases. Is one thing. It's not, uh, it, it, the, 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 the idea of the coordinator is, is not a, uh, a very recent idea, uh, but then there was one guy proposed something, wrote something, and then it goes and went viral. And uh, now you can see, you know, some, you know, some other people adopting something very similar, and so on. So I think that's that's the way to go. Uh, so that yeah, that's the way to go. So uh, uh, we 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 need we need uh, yeah we need to share more. It's really really. Um, uh, uh, is super important, especially when we adopt new technologies. Um, so, so Francisco said, I mean, we, we have uh, Innovation Day, we want to, um, when once a month, uh, we had one recently, what, two weeks ago. Uh, uh, it was awesome. Um, uh, I think that the guys just in one day, they, they, they managed to do things which were, I mean, uh, quite impressive. Um, and um, yeah, SwiftUI was on the, one of the things that is on our radar. It's part of our tech radar now. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're just embrace, embracing this, this, this framework. So, and we're, getting, we're going to get better. We know we're not perfect. SwiftUI is not perfect. Um, and so uh, we, we try to absorb as many, you know, many things as we can and, and to give as many things as we can as well. So uh, this presentation is to maybe step one. So uh, yeah, let, let, let's talk. Uh, maybe uh, uh, another another time. Conscious of time, uh, um, I can't remember how much time we have left. So, uh, um, but yeah. So, uh, uh, any any other other questions? Okay. So uh, we have. I think we are running out of time. I would like to thank you for all the. Um, for all the uh, all of you who attend this uh, uh, this presentation, I hope it has not been too boring. It's very exciting for for us. Uh, you can see on our um, uh, uh, on the on the slide, we have some vacancies, especially on iOS. So please feel free to um, go. You can scan the QR code, and uh, I think it's very 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 much for all of you. Thank you, Francisco. Thank you for Ariad for organizing <laughs> this. Uh, it was uh, superb. Uh, just hope let's chat. This session will be shared later on. Thanks everyone. Thank you guys. Thank you all. Take care.